Welcome to the Riding in the Weeds podcast, where we tackle life's inevitable challenges from navigating mountain bike trails to overcoming business hurdles and forging deeper connections with pets and people. It's easy to find yourself tangled in the weeds, but we're here to help with insights and strategies that'll get you out of the weeds. Our goal is to boost your performance in both sports and everyday life by sharing essential skills that we've learned along the way. Through tales of our entrepreneurship journey, thrilling biking adventures, and fostering meaningful relationships, your hosts, Natasha Lockie and Ginny Brandon, will guide you on a journey that's not only enjoyable, but also inspiring. Join us to gain confidence that you need to navigate the trails of life. Welcome to Riding in the Weeds. You are here with us for episode 64. This is going to be a fun one. Ginny and I are talking about how, well, basically you should make up your own rules. This episode is for you if you're a rule follower and you actually don't question the rules and then you're like, hold on a second. That doesn't make sense. Are there things you are not doing because the rules don't work for you? So... We're going to dive right on in. I'm Natasha Lockie. I am a performance life and mountain bike coach where I constantly break the rules and I'm here to help you see that often those are the things that are actually stopping you from being able to live your dream life. And we've got Jenny Brandon here who is an animal communicator. She's a businesswoman. She loves to ride horses and for certain she knows that when it comes to your pets, the only rules that apply are the ones that work for you. So without further ado, let's get dug on in here. And as always, Ginny, let's kick us off. How are you following your own rules? What are, you, what are your thoughts around rules, you rule breaker, you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to say that this episode was actually inspired by me checking my sleep app. I have a sleep tracker on my watch and I pulled up the app the one day and it gave me a kind of low score. And I'm like, well, that's weird. I feel pretty good. And I go in and look and it docked me because I was asleep for like almost nine hours. And I was like, screw you, that's stupid. I like my nine hours of sleep. Thank you very much. So it just got me thinking that my sleep app has these parameters that it believes are the most ideal optimal conditions for sleep. And admittedly, if you're getting too much sleep, that is a problem, just like too little sleep is also a problem. But I need a lot of sleep. That's just me naturally. My dad sleeps a lot and I need a lot of sleep. I am definitely an eight hour a night person. Seven hours once in a while is not too bad, but if I do that too many nights in a row, It is not healthy for me. I am not any good or use to the world if that happens. And so that's what inspired this. I think I sent you a message and was like, this is stupid. My sleep app like gave me a bad score. And I was irritated about it because I knew for me, that's what did feel good. So to have this thing like telling me I'm like not doing something well is like, that's not cool. But it also made me realize how many times we follow rules just because we've been told that's a good idea. Eight hours of sleep, eight glasses of water. There's so many that you can rattle off, you know, three square meals a day, eat a healthy breakfast, like all these rules that exist because in some situation they made sense and or were helpful. But so often I think we get derailed because we don't stop to check in to see if that's actually valuable for us and for our body. And I think that's where we go wrong when we are following rules and don't stop to see, is this useful for me? Yeah, there's so much in there because my first question that pops to mind is, is there not like a setting in your sleep app whereby it asks you how your sleep was or how you felt afterwards? Because to me, when it comes to something like that, I feel like it should be checking in with you and then adjusting, right? Like, because the rules are not set. Some people do well on six hours of sleep. Some people do on seven. And for your sleep app to not be asking you questions so that it can adjust, because that that shouldn't be a rule, right? That should be a, a setting that adjusts based on 
how you feel. Even the insight timer. You know, how do you feel after a two minute meditation? Gathering the data from you so that it can actually work for your intuition or with your intuition because arguably you've signed up for a sleep app because you need some assistance because you're not checking in with yourself enough. So having the app ask you how it's going, it's like my Duolingo. Shouldn't it be asking me at some point in time, do you feel confident? What could help you at the end of each level or something checking in with me to see it says it's a personalized program but how is it getting the personalized data where is it pulling that information from is it how many times I mess up because it's not asking me whether I feel any more confident in my Spanish teaching which I'm pretty sure if I was sitting in a classroom at some point the teacher would be like how is this program working for you and if it's not asking you that It's not adjusting for you, which means it's not customizing it for you. And you're different than everybody else. I'm actually going to use a bike analogy. Factory settings. What's a factory setting? That is how the factory sets up your bike. Who knows where the factory gets their settings from? Probably if they set it up in this way, it'll fit into the box better and be easier to ship. But if I was a factory person, that would probably be the measurement I would use. If the seat was up a certain height, then it's not going to fit into the box, right? And then the store takes your bike and it sets it up for your average human being. Your average female is about five foot five. They weigh around 145 pounds. Therefore, these things are set up in a certain way. Somebody picks up their bike from the store And we believe that the person in the store knows better than us. And if they've set the bike up in a certain way, then it's probably perfect and we shouldn't change a thing. That makes no logical sense. We just got new headphones and my husband's like, it only works in one ear. I'm like, yep. Every wireless set of headphones, he's like, I think they're broken. I'm like, yep every set of wireless headphones I've ever had that have been broken like that and so one day I went into the phone and I was like there's it's got to be a setting because this can't be three different brands all broken I found the toggle that says mono <laughs> make it play the same in both ears and so I couldn't remember where it was but I you know googled it found it finally found where it was and he's like yep that was off. It's like, thanks for fixing it. I went through C- three sets of headphones before I was like, maybe it's me. Yeah. How often do we not even realize that there is a choice? I didn't realize how adjustable things are on the bike and I was struggling with my gears I had a hard time with that middle gear. And I finally realized part of my problem was because the way the gear was positioned on the handlebar, that long push was too long because it was twisted under. And so I was not reaching the end of the length of the lever. So my (laughs) gear isn't going in right because I'm not actually pushing the lever all the way through as far as it needs to go because I didn't know that it should be adjusted. I was having to move my hand around a lot on the handlebars between that and my bell and flipping back and the brakes. And I was like, no, it doesn't have to be that way. And how often do we just get sucked into that's the way it is and don't ever question anything. My favorite funny example of this is what side do you mount the horse and or your bike on? 90% of the population out there, majority of the people will say the left. Why? Why do you get on on the left? It's because it's the side your sword's on. And that... I don't know about you, but I hadn't carried a sword in a while, so... (laughs) The amount of things that are in our world that that's related to... And when we forget to question where does that rule come from and... Why is that the truth? I always sort of judge people that ran 
because they would wear their spandex. I'm like, really, do you have to wear those running shorts? Well, probably not if you're going for a 5K run. However, if you go for a 20K run and it's hot and sweaty out, it's really nice to have some sort of something between your legs so that you don't chafe. And often these things and these tools and these things that we have, they're not what you need to get started. They're not essential to you doing something new for the first time. However, as you get into it, you don't have bike shoes. Don't not start biking. Yeah, sure. Wear your runners. Yeah. Not going to be ideal, but it's also not going to stop you from being as better than bare feet. And then you're going to learn, oh, you know what? Actually, flat soles are better. Cool. Well, having stickier soles, keep my feet on the pedals. There are things that will make something easier. And you may have more success, but so often we let ourselves be stopped to do something because there is this abstract rule that's out there. And then what happens is we start thinking we don't know anything, so therefore we can't do anything, therefore we don't do things. Yeah, I think this is the fickle thing about rules is that sometimes we end up boxing ourselves in there's one way to do this like people mounting on the left whether it's a horse or a bike like oh there's one way you do this and it even goes to leading the horses most people will lead from the left same thing because the sword was over there so it kept it out of the way which made sense 250 years ago i've even heard of people when they see someone that does something from the right with a horse they're like hey you're doing it wrong like Well, but says who? And for the horses, it's better to do things from both sides because then they get experience on both sides. And especially when it comes to mounting, it prevents them from having their body shifted with a load put on their back from one side only. So it's reasonable to do things from both sides and to teach your horse to accept that. So sometimes rules box us in in ways that we aren't even aware of but like you just said sometimes they can stop us from ever starting because we think something has to be a certain way and we for whatever reason feel we don't meet that standard whether that's a physical standard of needing a gear or equipment or whether that's something else going on we hold ourselves back by believing that and i can certainly tell you there are things that i have invested in I have a nice bike that's comfortable and adjustable for me, that works for me. I tried out a couple when I went to the store. I have a good helmet. That was another thing I wasn't really willing to compromise on. You got one noggin and that's it. So that wasn't really willing to be compromised on. But beyond that, oh, and I got padded shorts because bony butt. So invested in that. Beyond that, though, like I have basically no gear for my bike. And I'll say that I think I sent you you padded shorts. Why did I send you padded shorts? Because I have so many pairs of them and I don't wear padded shorts. And the thing with padded shorts is it it does depend. If you're on a road bike, it's going to be different. But overall, a lot of the time you need the padded shorts because you're actually sitting on the seat wrong. Right? And we're talking about rules and I'm like, you're doing it wrong. There is a... (laughs) The irony. The irony. There is a technique that you can do if you have better balance, if you are positioned better on your bicycle, if you're putting weight in different places like your hands and your feet and the way that you're pedaling uphill, if you adjust the way you are sitting on the seat, you're actually going to find that you don't need padding. The padding comes from the fact that you're putting your weight in the wrong places because you're not in the right ergonomic position in order to be super efficient it throws you off when you've got clipped in pedals the reason why the clipped in pedals were on the front of the foot was because when they came up with the bicycle the only stroke that they could compare it to was a running stroke and when you run you land on the balls of your feet so they were like okay well your pressure point should be on the balls of your feet so that's where they put the clip but this all came from information that was old and it 
filtered down and now they put the pedal a little bit further back so they actually clip in further back now from there we decided we didn't need to clip in all the time we could actually ride with flat pedals that's a whole other conversation and so then we had to have really stiff soles because if you've got your feet clipped in you have a really stiff soled shoe so we obviously need to do the same thing it needs to be the platform that you stand on and then people started to ask the question well why do we need a stiff sole well it's because you need a platform well what if we made the platform i.e the pedal bigger so if you have a longer pedal you've now got a nice strong platform therefore if you have a less stiff shoe it's going to still work it's not until you start asking those questions that you start realizing that there's actually the data that came in at the top was wrong which meant that your answer at the bottom was also wrong it's like when you're trying to do a mathematical equation and you transpose the numbers everything's going at the bottom is going to be wrong and i think so often we don't stop to think about like where did the data come from get in the back seat and hold on tight that was how i was taught to ride a mountain bike downhill i had mechanical disc brakes i mean before that they were caliper brakes those things don't slow you down so therefore when you're going down a steep hill you kind of need to throw your butt back in order to have more weight in the back which allows your brakes to have more chance of working my brakes are now as strong as my brakes are in my car do you think i still need to get my butt in the back seat and hold on tight no i can now be up front and it's not that that information is wrong but the bikes have changed so the rules have changed and if you're trying to ride a new bike with old rules shit don't work yeah and i think the supply is in so many areas that we just don't bother to question and maybe we should and when you are able to lead yourself with your gut and or with the intuition that you have access to then you can start to discern that stuff. And when it comes to our pet relationships, there's a lot of very old ways of doing things that still exist. And it's still very pervasive. There's rules and laws that are being put in place now to protect animals from ways of doing things that we now know are not nice at all and are not kind and do not do the animals any physical favors. That's especially true when it comes to areas where there's sports, where animals are commodities and where they are the means to an end. And when we can start to question those things and ask, is this really working? And use our animals as barometer. When they are doing well and when they are thriving, then you know you're on the right track. Are they healthy? Are they at a healthy body condition for that type of animal? What is their emotional state? When you can use that as your barometer, then you know when you're heading in the right direction. And if you try a training technique and it's not taking you down the right road, go the other way and keep asking more questions. Thankfully, we now have the internet where we can exchange ideas so rapidly and across such huge spaces so that we can find information now from people who are doing radical, amazing things, revolutionizing not only just animal relationships, but sports in general, physical pursuits in general, so that we can do better. So just because there is a rule there doesn't mean you have to follow it. You have to assess, is it useful to you? Is it helpful? And or is there a better way that might serve your goal in a way that will help you get there faster. And when you ask those questions and check in with every little thing you do along the way, you can find out whether or not it's helpful. I dare say part of the reason that pedals were under the ball of your foot is because that's where your stirrup goes in the saddle. <laughs> your stirrups are under the ball of your foot. You push them any yeah. further back and you're gonna get caught if something happens. Now yeah. you're getting dragged because that's a major safety risk. So some of these things were just born out of what we did because it worked somewhere else. 
Yeah. And when you question that, you can find out, is that the way it really should be? We have, as you said, we have so much information available to us. Just to throw a, a completely different angle at it as well. The other day we're driving along and we came to a stop sign. And me and my husband went out and something was said by someone in the vehicle. And he was like, well, you know, stop signs were just invented by the oil companies so that you use more gas. And I looked at him and I'm like, where did that come from? And we talked about it later. And this is something that our friend from Norway said. And that is actually something that kind of started to come out. That the reason why they invented stop signs was because if you have to come to a complete stop, then you have to start again. You use more gas. Now, is it a conspiracy theory? Is it the truth? We can debate this. The, the point being is that what was the rule based on? <laughs> why... Did someone come up with a rule? And I think so often in our society, from a micro version to a macro version, we are following rules that were created out of capitalism. They were created to control us. They were created to protect us. They were created based on the fact that at that moment in time, it was important when cars have the ability to stop before they ever have an accident, will we still need seatbelts? I don't know. Are things going to evolve and change because of the way we do things are evolving and changing? And back to ourselves, when you're starting on a fitness journey, when you're starting on a biking journey, when you've got a pet, when you are eating, when you're exercising, like all of these things, when you're in your career, in your life, there are no rules. What feels good? What works for you? If Ginny and I had looked at other people that do podcasts and believe that in order to have a podcast, we had to have a team of people and a studio and all of these things and a big budget, we never would have started because we would have thought that, that was the rule. However, if we'd looked at somebody else who started in a closet, we would have been like, hey, we're ahead of the curve. And I mean, Jenny's got a fancy microphone. I got my earbuds in. Like, there are so many different ways of doing things. So balance. What you know, information that's available, what feels good in the head, what feels good in the gut. Is your human design to have an open head, therefore don't ever trust your head because you've actually got an emotional center and that's the only place that you really can make decisions from? Or do you have a completely open emotional center and therefore everything has to happen in your head because that's where the focus is? Like, know yourself, know what you need and then adapt. And Maybe don't blow off the stop signs because you will get a ticket. Some rules you have to follow even if you don't agree with why they're there. Some of them <laughs> are important, but yeah, I love it. <laughs> yeah, this is perfect. I hope that you had as much fun with this as we did. If you know someone who follows too many rules, no, I'm just kidding. But if, if you think that somebody can benefit from listening to this podcast, please share it with them. We have a lot of fun. We hope that you enjoy the content that we put out and we look forward to seeing you next time. I am Natasha Lockie. I am a performance life and bike coach. And as I said, so much of what I do is breaking this stuff down and really analyzing where is it that you want to be in your life? Where are you right now? And how can you put into place action steps that will help you move into where you want to be in the next moment? So reach out to me. Let's have a chat. How can I help you? move into enjoying every moment and, and living life the way that you dreamed your life could be when you were a little kid. You can find me at Betty Gohard on Instagram, Natasha Lockie on Facebook and on LinkedIn. And I am just going to throw one plug in there. We've got one week left for our early bird for my retreat, which is happening January 12th to the 17th. It's a bike yoga surf retreat in Baja, Mexico. You do not want to miss this. It's going to be incredible. You can find more information. We'll pop the link below, but BajaAdventureRetreat.com 
is where all of that is happening. So please reach out to me if you're interested in joining us for that. And Ginny, please tell us about yourself. Yeah, I am Ginny Brandon. I'm an animal communicator and energy healer for animals and their people too. If you are having challenges with your pet relationships or just want to know more about your pet, reach out to me and let's get a session together for the two of you. I would love to connect with you both. You can find me on the web at soulpetconnections.com and on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube under the same handle. Again, I'll echo what Tosh said. Thank you so much for joining us today. You can find the podcast on ridinginintheweeds.com and on all major podcast platforms, as well as Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube too. We look forward to seeing you again. Break all the rules that make sense for you and keep doing what you're doing. And we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for joining us.